Hi, welcome to Ghost Man Radio Show, and tonight my guest is Dr. Pamela Girari, originally a pioneer in spiritual growth and transformation. She has life-changing experiences and insights with clarity and humour. She captivates readers and audience with wisdom and practical guidance from the blueprint of the human spirit, a historic model of consciousness, compassion, living. She's an architect for the human spirit. She's a registered nurse with a master's degree, public health, a doctorate in holistic health sciences. She is uniquely qualified to present teachings for the blueprint since it's evolved its harmony and transformation. She utilizes her creativity and amazing gifts to encourage others to live authentically and purposely in alignment with their inner truth for transforming experiences and training background in nursing, allowing her to speak. With a heart for, with authority. Pamela is an empowering author, shares captivating experiences, offers a transforming guidance of revival clarity. In intuitive healer, reveals life changing insights for one on one to one spiritual blueprinting sessions. Intellectual speaker, gauges audiences with dramatic, humorous, and compelling experiences. Eliminating leadership mentor. Guides individuals and organizations to envision and enhance their impact and outreach. And today she'll be talking about a, a, new, a new book, The Dance of the Ego and Essence Confessions of a Diva, Divine Diva. And hi, Pamela, how are you today? I'm fine, Mark. It is very nice to be with you today. I think we're quite far away from each other. I'm in Florida. Yeah, she said it would be a very long swim and probably it'd be nice and warm you're in. And the time we got here, it'd be very cold. <laughs> yes, of course. Well, but I am just thrilled to be able to share information about the gifts that I've received, my amazing journey that has led me to uh, experience and uh, discover some wonderful things that I believe are of great benefit. Not only have they been beneficial to me, but also they are helping other people. So I'm, I'm just excited to share a little bit about my journey and my new book, The Dance of Ego and Essence, and also a little bit about spiritual blueprinting, which is a gift of intuitive healing that I share with others. And of course, the blueprint for the human spirit, which is uh, an amazing gift that guided my spiritual growth and is helping other people as well. So I'm really happy to be here. So let's start with some questions. In your new book, The Dance of Ego in Essence, you share an extraordinary journey experience. Can you tell us about that journey and why was it 40 days? Is it anything connected to the, the Bible? I would love to tell you about my journey because it had a very powerful impact on me. I had been very ill with a viral thyroiditis, and I was in bed for about at least six months. And when I finally recovered from that, I was ready to go back to work, and I didn't know what to do first. But... I was guided by the higher powers that be to get up early and come to my sacred space, my office, and write confessions for 40 days. Well, I had been a spiritual teacher for a long time, and I just didn't realize I had that much more to confess, <laughs> but I decided to follow the guidance. And at first I thought, you know, it was just generic write um, confessions every day. And I says, okay, well, how about 21 days? Because it takes 21 days to create a habit. And it was like, no. And I said, okay, 30 days a month. No, 40 days. Well, I didn't know why 40 until I did some research. And when I looked up the uh, significance of 40, I realized that 40 represents rebirth. And there are so many stories in the Bible in particular that I'm aware of, where 40 is so significant. There was the 40-day flood, that, and uh, Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness, in the uh, 
Gethsemane, um, gestation for humans is 40 weeks. And, of course, there's 40 years that the Israelites wandered in the wilderness. So there are so many uh, stories that use that number because it's very symbolic of rebirth. And certainly that is what happened to me when I went through this process. So I didn't know exactly what to expect or what to do, but I just sat in my office in the silence for a few moments. I lit a candle just because, you know, I thought it would help me focus. And then a word came to me, discipline. Well, I had this visceral reaction because I don't get along with discipline very well. I don't like people telling me what to do or what not to do. And I thought, oh, my goodness, there's my first confession. So I wrote that down in my journal. And as I just allowed my experiences to flow onto the page, I realized that discipline from our parents uh, becomes self-discipline if we integrate it into our way of being. And when we can say no to one thing, we can say yes to something that's better or something more meaningful to us. And in doing that, discipline becomes direction and we can chart our course for the future. That's how we move forward. And that was such a powerful revelation to me. I just wrote my story down. In fact, I wrote how my mother used to stand me in the corner because uh, it was painful. I was very hyperactive. In fact, I still am. And uh, so it was awful uh, to me to have to stand in the corner for who knows how long, 15, 20 minutes. And uh, then I looked over at my desk in my office, and my desk sits in the corner now, it's right beside a window, and I can see out the door, but I am in the corner, and fortunately, the corner no longer has uh, a charge for me. But um, anyway, so that was the first day, and then every day, a new word came to me, and I released and wrote exactly what came into my mind, and it just flowed out of me like automatic writing to the point where, you know, every day, something new, something more. I was releasing uh, things that I had stored down inside or stuffed way down in that I was so humiliated about or so fearful about, just kind of came pouring out. And halfway through this 40-day process, I was flying because I had released so much more that I knew uh, this exercise was very special and very powerful. So that's kind of the story of how that book came to be. It basically wrote itself. <laughs> what motivated you to pursue this journey to self-discovery? Well, I was raised in a very fundamental Christian church in a very conservative home in a tiny little town in Pennsylvania. And my world was very, very narrow. And when I went to college, I left all that behind and pursued this amazing career. And I loved what I did. But, you know, there was always something missing. And I didn't go to church or anything except to sing because I loved to sing. And as soon as the minister would get up on the platform, I shut down, and I never heard a word. But I was led to something very special that was a turning point in my life. And I think we all go through that process as we are expanding, growing, learning, developing. And I was given the opportunity to attend a workshop on leadership. Well, they did visioning and journaling and they had us work with change partners, and we did nature walks, and I mean, it was amazing. I had never done any of that before. And I wrote and experienced something really new and fresh. And when I went back to work after this uh, beautiful leadership workshop, 
I realized that my job was no longer compatible with my new vision. So I quit my job. I had just gotten married, and I quit my job so that I could pursue a spiritual path. And in the process, I read every book I could get my hands on. I went to every holistic workshop. You know, I studied all the masters, and I tried all the practices, and it just didn't feel right. And because I was raised in a in a church that I call uh, that had what I call the unholy trinity of guilt, shame, and fear, I was very fearful that I would be led down a wrong path. So I continued to study and read, but very uh, I was very fearful. And then one day I was awakened in the middle of the night and I started receiving divine downloads with my own information. It was like this. I tapped into this higher source and it flowed through me and it led me for it, one concept, one idea at a time. The blueprint for the human spirit emerged and through my analytical mind and my logical, rational thinking, it all came together in this beautiful matrix that I call the blueprint for the human spirit. And it came with sacred geometry. And I had no idea what that was, but I, I received these shapes and, and uh, colors and things like that. So the blueprint for the human spirit emerged as my inner teacher one phase at a time, and I just followed its teachings. And in the process, of course, the universe also provides opportunities for us to learn what we're supposed to. So I had the great chances emerged for me to put into practice what I was learning. So that is how the blueprint emerged. And it was a very beautiful, more intellectual process that ultimately... Sorry, could you say that again? So changed. So anyways, that's how the blueprint emerged. And it has been my inner teacher, and it is my passion and my purpose. Mm -hmm. for, for the listeners' benefit, uh, Pamela, I'm going to ask you two a part of question. What is the blueprint for the human spirit, and how can this blueprint for the human spirit be used as a roadmap, roadmap for personal and spiritual growth? That's a bit of a long one, but. like a guide, a very comprehensive guide for personal growth, professional success, and spiritual awakening. It helps us to bring our, our actions and our thoughts and our feelings into alignment with essence, the truth of our being. And it also is um, very, it's holistic, first of all. It has five primary dimensions the physical, mental, emotional, intuitive, and spiritual, with the spiritual aspect being more like the sum total of it all. And then it has five uh, fields of existence, the energetic or quantum field, the personal, social, global, and eternal. So there are 25 boxes or cells in the blueprint matrix, and each one is filled with all kinds of guidance and, and for how we can live either more authentically in the personal realm, more compassionately in the social realm, and more consciously in the global realm, and of course in the eternal realm, that's the nature of essence, the truth of our being. So this beautiful guide emerged one idea at a time and, and flowed together into this holistic uh, matrix that is truly unique among um, spiritual models. And it's also 
very powerful because it's relevant for people from all faiths and walks of life. It's about our inner spirituality. It is not a religion. It's not dogma. And it merges together um, new science with ancient teachings, Eastern philosophy, and Western psychology. So it's, it's beautiful in that way. And it also isn't hierarchical because it is in a matrix format. So it isn't like you start at the bottom and you work to the top. Although each cell in the matrix has core truths that when we integrate them into our way of being, then we can live more consciously and compassionately. So it's a beautiful, beautiful model. And there is a some information on my website about it. In fact, if you go to my homepage and scroll down on my website, there's a place for you to uh, receive a free booklet about the blueprint that gives you some general information about how it came to be and, and what it includes and the benefits of studying the blueprint. Oh, so I'll have a look at that later. Um, well, there is one other thing I'd like to share with you, um, Mark. At, um, and the blueprint, when it first started to emerge, it was a very interesting intellectual exercise. And of course, I was uh, studied all the sciences, and I was very rational and logical and skeptical about how I approach things. So when the blueprint first came to be, it was very rational, logical, this beautiful chart. And, I mean, that's perfect, except one day in meditation, and I'm not good at meditation, but this one day I just went sailing, and in an hour and a half, I experienced a dramatic event in the lives of 15 past lives. Just, it just blew me away, and, and I was so overwhelmed because there were people from all walks of life. There were men, women, and children. They spanned the ages from the ancient Mayan times to more recent 1900s. And when I came to, after this mind-blowing uh, meditation, I ran into my office and I wrote a couple lines down about each one that I recalled. And there were 15. Well, at that time, there were 15 primary boxes or cells in my matrix. And I spent the entire day writing what I had experienced and analyzing it. And what I realized was that there was one individual, one past life for each cell in the matrix. And each one of them reflected a core shift in consciousness. And each one of them reflected aspects of my life now, you know, this lifetime. And they also showed how we evolve spiritually. We begin as victims where things happen to us beyond our control. And then we strive to take charge and use ego effort to to control our lives, and then eventually we become, so we become the vessel through which God works, through which spirit expresses, and until we become the presence of God, until we can show up as the hands and the heart and the voice of God. So we go through this process of discovering who we are and why we're here and how we're connected with everyone and everything and how we are one with God and all that is. And in the process, you know, we evolve spiritually, but we also make so many discoveries about our divine blueprint and why we're here. You also mentioned... Um about radical honesty exercise. What, what oh, is yes. that? It sounds yes. quite interesting. Yes, this is back to the book. The, 
when I was um, writing, uh, it was actually just a journal, and I shared a couple of my writings with friends, and they said, oh, you have to share this book with everybody because, you know, when we read this, it brought up all of our own stuff, too, and it helped us. So I thought, really, do I have to uh, uh, share all my dirty spiritual laundry with the entire world? And the answer was yes. <laughs> but what I have discovered was if we truly want to clear our souls, have a deep soul cleanse so that we can be free to express the truth of our being so that we can experience life in its fullness, we have to get down and dirty. We have to be so radically honest and in order for us to let everything go, in order to uh, release all the baggage, I mean, all the ballast that's keeping us back. And if we can just be radically honest it is so free, and that's what happened to me. I did not censor anything that came to me as I was doing this 40-day uh, journaling exercise. And I know that if everybody would join me in this process, we could be so free to uh, you know, enjoy life. We could let go of so much more than we ever, ever have in the past. And I also, because it was such a powerful experience for me, I created a companion journal that's called Embrace Your Divine Inner Diva. And it has a holistic process because I learned through the blueprint that you just can't read things. You just can't write things. It can't just be all intellectual. It has to touch us completely. We have to see, hear, taste, touch, and feel, so to speak, in order to let go. We have to experience this firsthand. And so the journal, the companion journal, can be done alone, but it includes meditations. It includes uh, a chance for everybody to kind of write their own confession and their own story. And then also to uh, engage in a fun, joyful dance uh, play uh, activity to, so you can experience it firsthand. And I'm also in the process of working with a gifted musician, Stu Shelton, here in where, near where I live. And we are recording the meditations for each day. And he is a gifted jazz and new age musician who, as I uh, record the meditations, he just allows the music to emerge from him. And it's beautiful. So we're working on that right now. You use affirmations at the end of your the, uh, healing process. Have you yes. got an example you're willing to share with us? Well, absolutely. I told you about my first day where I said about discipline. And after, you know, for instance, I'll compare it to what I wrote about discipline. My confession was, I am undisciplined and resist the very thought of anything or anyone restricting me from doing what I want. So that was my first confession. And after I wrote all about my experience with discipline and how it was transformed into direction, I wrote this affirmation. My life is disciplined and in harmony with divine order. I am one with all that is. And, I mean, it was interesting that that all happened within one hour. I wrote for one hour. And I went from this visceral reaction, which is you know, kind of what happens when when we are confronted with something, we go back to old ways or we think, you know, these old thoughts and experiences pop up. And then when we have time to breathe and release and realize how far we've come, perhaps, then we 
can see the difference with an affirmation that is such a powerful, powerful thing. So, so here is another one. I'll, I'll read another one for you. This, I'm just picking this randomly. On day 16, I wrote about from guilty to blameless. And my confession said, I am a victim of religious abuse and suffered with extreme guilt and feelings of unworthiness for many years. In fact, that led me to try and be a perfectionist because I was trying to be good enough and I guess to get inside the pearl gates, I'm not sure, but um, anyways, after writing about guilt and how that is washed clean, I wrote an affirmation that said, I am free of guilt and live a life of love, peace, and joy, which reflects the essence of my being. I mean, every day, and, and even today when I read these affirmations, I get goosebumps because they were so powerful. And each day was such a an amazing, releasing experience. So that's how the affirmations have become a part of that whole process. We affirm how far and what we've learned and how far we can go on our spiritual journey to realize the truth of our being, to shift from where we use ego effort to make things happen until we can just uh, embrace and express the essence of our being. So I want to describe this book as a quite a powerful healing tool that would help people in quite a lot of situations as we find ourselves in present. I mean, we could be on the verge of a World War Three. We don't know at the moment. But yeah. There is that fear in the air. Um, yeah. And we can't deny that. We've got... We haven't really got good... I don't think we ever get rid of COVID. It was, we've got to live with it now. And I think yeah. that... And by reading books like your like you've written, Doctor Pamela, we can sort of get guidelines as to how we want to be a better person. Would you agree or disagree? Absolutely. And I think every one of us has this inner drive to learn and to grow and to evolve and to be the best that we can be. I, I believe it's in there. And I know from my own personal experience and everything that I have learned from the blueprint and from other uh, masters that as we embrace the truth of our being, first of all, we go through this process of releasing a lot of fear. And in my work, with the blueprint and what I discovered is that there is this universal belief in duality. We believe that we are separate from everyone and everything because we see our physical body and we think, okay, I'm separate from you and everything, but we're all energy beings and separation creates fear. It creates fear in the physical realm. We fear death. We fear lack. We fear Someone's going to hurt us or harm us. And um, in the mental dimension, we fear that we're going to be wrong, that somebody's going to lead us down the wrong path or something, or tell us things that are inappropriate. In the emotional realm, we fear abandonment. We fear that we are going to be rejected. Um, I mean, these are just examples. In the intuitive realm, we fear someone's going to control us, is going to suppress us and in the, in the uh, spiritual realm of course there's the whole idea that we don't even know our higher self we're not connected with that truth of our being but there's a process that we go through as we learn and grow and as we discover our divine blueprint where with fears we realize that they lead us to 
have addictions and attachments to things that kind of make us feel better. But they are false uh, substitutes for what we really crave. And then eventually we react and we res- to uh, all of these things and then move forward until we discover that there is something else and we can learn and grow and we can adopt new ways of thinking and new ways of being and new ways of expressing. And eventually we come to a point where we realize that we are one, that we are not separate, that we are all connected. And just like the golden rule says, do unto others as you would do unto yourself because we are one and when we're one when we know that first of all we lose fear where it's not me against you or us against them there's no need to fight and there's no need to um compete because we're in this together and in the process we discover more about each other. We know that we're connected. We belong as part of humanity. And so there's this whole process that we go through. And on a personal level, instead of like focusing just on the physical and health and wellness, you know, we blend all aspects of our being into one authentic whole. And we find a sense of balance and we become authentic. In the social realm, we discover it's all about relationships and we realize that we are connected and that we have a higher purpose, that we are here to serve others and we can do that compassionately. And in the global realm, where we're here to sustain Earth for future generations and to be a part of the whole and to generously give and share, you know, then we learn how to live consciously so that we can leave a legacy of love for the future. So there's all these things that happen in this process and we eventually learn how to show up every day as the love that we are as the hands and the heart and the voice of God here on earth. That's why we're here. And it doesn't matter where we work, what we do, or who we serve. If we show up every day, we can make a huge difference because we allow love to express and touch everyone around us because we have become that beautiful expression of the divine. And I'm not sure I answered your question because I got carried away here. So that's okay, that's okay. <laughs> I think you got the gist of it. Um, now, you have a one-woman show. I'll, I'll, pump it, I'll promote it for you. Confessions of a spiritually promiscuous per, woman. I think I got that right. Yes. And obviously... I you can you can share what as much as you want to buy and advertise it as much as you want to it. Well, I haven't performed that for a while, but there is a recording on my website, and I will remind everybody that I need to have see if I can get it tweaked because I don't really show up until about the twelfth minute, and my husband who helped me with the show he ran the music and the PowerPoint. He introduces me before that, and then there's a welcome before that. But at minute 12 is where I begin. And this, the show, Confessions of a Spiritually Promiscuous Woman, is about my spiritual journey. And it's about how I uh, began as this very fearful uh, young girl, like I was like 11 years old or so in the first scene of my show. And um, and then, you know, who suffered from religious abuse. And then I left that all behind and they became a rebel, you know, because I wasn't allowed to dance. I wasn't allowed to wear short skirts. I wasn't allowed to wear sandals. I had to wear long dresses and white stockings and cold shoes and 
we couldn't cut our hair, wear makeup or jewelry. I mean, it was very, very um, narrow, very, uh, a lot of rules. And so I left that all behind and I loved to dance and I, you know, kind of worshipped the Bacchus, the, the god of uh, wine, music and exotic dance, so to speak. Then I became a perfectionistic workaholic because I was trying to be my best. I was trying to make a difference, but I was a bulldozer and it was, and I was very probably difficult to work with because I was so pushy. I pushed myself. I tried to be my best and I expected everybody else to be the same. And then eventually I became a spiritual junkie because I was seeking. I wanted to discover the truth and I searched everywhere and I learned a lot about myself, but in the process, you know, then eventually I received the blueprint for the human spirit and the blueprint with it. Then I became like a, Oh, a closet guru because I didn't know how to explain it. I didn't know how to tell people. And as it grew and grew, I, I had less, uh, confidence that I could truly share the, its wisdom with others because there was so much I had learned over the years. But but I decided, hey, this is why I'm here, so I have to tackle it. And, you know, part of that process is discovering why we are here. And I know for a fact that I am here to put all those pieces together into that beautiful matrix and to share the blueprint with the world. It's my passion and my purpose. And one day I was kind of feeling quite smug about having nailed my sacred mission. And so I asked my husband, who was retired and, and um, was golfing, you know, hitting a little white ball around. I said, well, you know, I know why I'm here. Do you know what your purpose is? You know, and he, without even a moment's hesitation, he said, yes, I am here to support you so you can fulfill your higher purpose. And I thought, oh my goodness, what a gift from God is he. And I just love this man so much, but I just thought that was amazing. <laughs> well, it's always so, nice, that, isn't it? It's always good to get that. <laughs> but uh, I have a difficult time explaining the blueprint because there's so much to it. But I also, in the process of receiving the blueprint, I discovered that I was intuitive. Now, if you think about the fact that I was scientifically trained to be a nurse uh, with a master's in public health, and I was very rational, logical person, being intuitive is a big leap. And I wasn't sure exactly how to handle that, but I received the gift of healing of intuitive healing and I offer this beautiful intuitive healings with uh, clients. It's all based on the blueprint, but I become like a mirror and I can do it in person, you know, not so much now with COVID, but on Zoom and we open ourselves to receive divine guidance and I shut my eyes and my body goes into motion. I feel things. I sense things. I know things. And I speak in first person because I'm a mirror, but also because we are one. And my healing is your healing is the healing of the world. And in the process of doing these amazing healings, um, I just move around and I just know what every motion and every position and everything that I sense means. And so I share that and receive guidance on how to shift, how to mostly change our perceptions so that we can realize the truth, so that we can find healing and change our lives for the better. So in the process of this uh, healing modality, the spiritual blueprinting emerging, I had no idea how to explain that to people either. And one day, 
I'll never forget this. It was just hysterical. But we invited some new neighbors over for dinner, and we were talking about, you know, our lives and what we'd done in the past. And so I said, well, you know, I have the blueprint for the human spirit that I work with, and I do intuitive healings. And I kind of waved my fingers and said, woo, to this man who was sitting next to me. And he slid his chair like three feet away from me, thinking I was going to cast a spell on him or something. It was hysterical. But I realized that certainly didn't work. I'm going to have to come up with a better way to uh, <laughs> explain what I do. But um, anyways, this gift of healing is something that is so powerful that I, and I benefit so much also that I love doing it. And so that information is on my website as well, drpamelagirali.com. And that is spelled G-E-R-A-L-I. So um, I hope uh, people will be inclined to learn a little bit more about it and to consider some support on their journey because we have a lot to shift, a lot of lessons to learn. And in the process of doing these healings, the most critical thing that happens is a shift in perception. When we look at our situation with new eyes, when we see the underlying issues that are creating what's going on in our lives, we can find healing and wholeness as a result. So they're powerful. Yeah, I've looked at your website. I find it very interesting. I like in the websites that you can see exactly what you're going to do, what information is there, nice and clear. You can read all the things you want to read, pop in, pop out. And that's the kind of websites I like. Because we don't, sometimes we send, we do a lot of scanning in life. We don't mean to, but we do, don't we? We sort of, oh, we do. We're very good like that. I, I do all the time. I sort of scan something. But when I find interest, I go, oh, that's really interesting. And then I go deeper into it. But, you know, each time of day, everything, life, the universe. Well, uh, Pamela, Pam, we've come to the end of the podcast now. Would you like to mention any uh, way you can get your book, your website again, and the other information you wish to share? Well, I would just encourage everyone to their own personal growth, to take responsibility for themselves and step out of victimhood if you're stuck in victimhood. And the easiest way to do that is with greater awareness and to engage in your own uh, dance of ego and essence because that will clear your soul so quickly and so free you to such a great degree that you truly will be flying. I was euphoric at the end of the session. Of course, then we always kind of, things happen and we come crashing down and we have to uh, regroup and just realign ourselves with truth. But I would encourage everyone to engage in this radically honest process of releasing, of realizing, the truth of their being, because when we discover our divine blueprint, we can sail. We can achieve so much more than we ever thought possible. We can uh, express truth. We no longer are trapped by fear, and old experiences no longer hold us back because we know that we learn something from them when we shift our perception and seeing the positive. So I would just encourage everybody to go through this process because it truly is healing and freeing. Now, what would you like to, um, um, I always say to people, I used to say to people, what would, uh, what would, your, would be your unique sign of? So what would yours be, Dr. Pamela? Sorry, I didn't hear that. What would your unique sign-off be? My unique sign-off? Well, I would first say that 
we are all beloved, holy, and whole. And I see that in you, and I know that about you and everybody, and that I wish only the best for everybody, for their highest good. And so my sign-off is, may you be richly blessed. And here's mine for you. If I get your last name wrong again, I will apologize in the past. Okay. So you can put me in the naughty step. Okay. <laughs> Today I talked to Pamela Girelli, pioneer, visionary, spiritual growth, transformation, changing, life-changing experiences. She gives you the blueprint wisdom and compassionate living. She's an architect of the human spirit. And much, much more. You could learn a great deal from reading the book, The Dance of the Ego and Essence of Confessions of a Diva, Divine Diva. And if you really want to know about the confessions, why not go and li- listen to the 12 minute uh, other ver- uh, altered version? Because she's in it from the 12 minute bit. Just remember that bit. If you want to go watch Confessions of a Spiritually Promiscuous Woman, Laugh, cry, and dance with Dr. Pamela Jorelli as she shares her transforming story. And as she would say herself, discover your divine blueprint. And that yes. is the end of that. Thank you. Thank you so very much.